after seven years of working with these brilliant folks, I've come to believe that they are onto something. That perhaps for our most tricky disagreements, seeking the truth and seeking to convince others of the truth might not be the right place to start. The number one challenge here that we we see in, is, of course, the First Amendment in the United States. Of course. Welcome back. Thanks for watching. Believe it or not, I used to be an avid NPR listener, but sometime around the Bush years, NPR became noticeably ideological and biased in favor of Democrats. They weren't alone either, with the vast majority of our former free press also becoming an extension of the Democrat Party. You can actually see trust in the media dropping over the years, with everyone except for Democrats, of course, who are being told what they want to hear. However, the problem is unique when it comes to NPR and PBS, because these are public entities that have received taxpayer money despite being fully capable of making their own money. Does anyone out there think the country would stand for a similar taxpayer-funded right-wing network? Let me know in the comments. Now, this is where it starts to get crazy and also plainly obvious that NPR has become a far-left ideological outlet for Democrats. Last week, NPR's editor actually came out as a whistleblower of sorts, saying the network had lost its way. When I started... There was a liberal orientation, but I think it, we were more guided by curiosity, open mindedness. You know, you said talked about policy. Um, we were kind of nerdy and really like to dig into things and understand the complexity of things that I think that's evolved over the years into a much narrower kind of niche thinking, a group think that's really clustered around a very s selective progressive views that don't uh, they don't allow enough air enough enough spaciousness to consider all kinds of perspectives you would think that the network's freaking editor putting himself out there and telling the truth would be embraced by such open-minded just the facts non-ideological news network and also doesn't it just make sense that npr would want to prove this editor wrong if nothing else no you idiot nope instead npr ceo has now suspended the editor and as of making this video, the editor has now resigned. Holy shit! And employees of NPR are publicly lashing out at the editor with creepy, cultish sounding rants about so called diversity and hallowed people of color. How dare people think that NPR is just a woke cult soaking up government money so they can produce far left propaganda masquerading as news? At this point, you must be asking yourself what kind of nutty far left CEO is running this funny farm? Hold on to your butts. And after seven years of working with these brilliant folks, I've come to believe that they are onto something. That perhaps for our most tricky disagreements, seeking the truth and seeking to convince others of the truth might not be the right place to start. In fact, our reverence for the truth might be a distraction that's getting in the way of finding common ground. Now, that is not to say that the truth doesn't exist, nor is it to say that the truth isn't important. Clearly, the search for the truth has led us to do great things, to learn great things. Good, you have me worried there. That'd be horseshit. But. <laughs> Boy, here we go. The truth of the matter is very often, for many people, what happens when we merge facts about the world with our beliefs about the world. So we all have different truths. The truth hurts, doesn't it? Oh, sure. Maybe not as much as jumping on a bicycle with a seat missing, but it hurts. The number one challenge here that we, we see in, is, of course, the First Amendment in the United States. What? I started by talking about the idea of free and open as some of our founding principles, sort of free and open source coming from the idea of the open source community. Well, I have come to the opinion and the, and the perspective that free and open was a way of looking at the world that was inherently limited relative to what we were trying to achieve. The idea of a written tradition, which is particular to some cultures and not to others, the ways in which we I'd ascribe notability often really comes from sort of this white male um, westernized construct around who matters in societies. Oh, right, yeah. 
Of course. Of course, this is the CEO of a news outlet that's totally not a far left ideological cult that sees the First Amendment as a problem. Gee, maybe if free speech and truth are a problem to your agenda, you might not be the good guy. That isn't all she said either. I mean, sure, looting is counterproductive, but it's hard to be mad about protests not prioritizing the private property of system of oppression founded on treating people's ancestors as private property. I'm angry. Hot angry, slow angry, relentless angry. This anger is going to fuel and burn for a long time and it will deliver back exponentially. The thing is, I'm a woman, so VC Twitter will ignore me entirely. So America is addicted to white supremacy and that's the real issue. Lady, you're scaring us. <laughs> all right, what do you all think? Why is NPR still getting public funding despite being so clearly in the tank for an ideology and a party? If we can't defund NPR, then we need a right-wing alternative that also receives public funds. Let me know what you think in the comments, and if you're still here, might as well hit that like button. Thanks for watching. Keep checking back for more.